Hello, welcome back to Beno Sushi Life Noding. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about um, something uh, like a hidden feature in Stretch of Notes. Um, it is called uh, presets. Preset is uh, a way you can kind of uh, store a note tree very, very quickly inside your hard drive, like uh, offline, and then you can you can actually share it and you can import it into a Blender at any time. So I made a couple uh, just the other day, and uh, basically presets is actually hiding here on the left side panel. Um, the other, of course, is to create a uh, spare chalk nodes. But normally, uh, when using spare chalk, I use a shift A. So shift A can take you to all these nodes, but you can also use it, use the panel. Um, but let's focus on the presets for now. So presets, what does it do? Um, so, I, so I have a couple already here and I believe the presets is actually stored in the hard drive somewhere. I'll, sh I'll check it soon. Let me try make one. So there's a random offset line. This is the one I made earlier. So this will create this random um, offset line. Basically, I'm using this offset 2D uh, node and I'm using the circle and this is I can still change all the attributes and once I can also change the randomizations for the offset radius so this is becoming like a very interesting workflow because you can you can click on the button and it will it will load the same kind of nodes again and again and you can you can actually create a, a bunch of this guy very very easily um, if you might notice that the preset, uh, the presets in this case, really storing the whole nodes. It doesn't just store the attributes, values. Um, it's actually, whenever you, <clears throat> whenever you, whenever you save a node tree, it's gonna save the whole thing. So, and whenever you import it back, it's gonna load the whole node tree. Um, soon we're gonna try to create uh, our presets ourselves and. See, this is actually very, very interesting, and you can you can start kind of building um, your architectural work or like a design or anything in 3D uh, in in Blender that you can make using nodes. You can save it as preset. In in the past, I actually uh, I have to tell you that I have been using um, also this uh, Sphere Chalk um, export and import. This, this is also very, very useful. You can easily export something to GIST. GIST is related to GitHub. Um, it's saving like a, some kind of anonymous, anonymous code into the GIST. See, and the GIST URL looks something like this. If you paste it, it takes you to GIST at GitHub. Let me quickly save this blend really quick. So this is a blend from preset. And yeah, and this is the geese, right? And if, if I start with a fresh blender, this is empty, and then I go to compositing, and this is the geese export. I can actually just get this uh, this code right here, and then import it into Spherechalk environment just by pasting it into this guy right here. Enter geese ID. So import. So I, I've been storing a lot of uh, spare chalk example nodes um, online. So either it just crashes, but uh, normally it just work. Sometimes it does test on Mac. Doesn't happen quite often on PC. But anyhow, you can just this is just an example. Import GIS and then import it. So there you go. You've got the nodes. Um, you can also actually save it as zip and then uh, import it into uh, GitHub. I, I do that sometimes. With that method, um, whenever it loads the zip, it's gonna open up uh, the blend. So that's another way. Um, if you've been using spare chalk or animation nodes for a while, you also know that you can, you can easily append. You can easily append um, node three this way, you know, like, you go to file, append, and then you go to the desktop and find the find your blend file where you store the node tree, and then you open it, 
and you should you should get it it's, it's the same kind of same thing but uh, one thing you have to know uh, with the presets is that it's very very convenient uh, really not just this you can you can continue working on a on a node tree so I can keep adding like the same node tree and then I can change the position yeah and then maybe make a bit of different color you know change the seed change the radius instead of circle maybe I'm using and gone so this kind of this actually really really powerful it's not like like not just like a once off thing you know that's really powerful and it, <clears throat> um, let's try making one ourselves let's um, save as blend number two delete everything start from fresh and let's think of something out of um, okay let's make something with a plane you know just basic a plane and then we can use offset offset line 2d and what happened if we plug this into this guy and then you right click and then connect it to viewer draw you get a frame very cool you can offset the frame you can increase the plane as well and you get that kind of a kind of like a cabinet or you can switch it to different oh actually in this case you cannot switch it but you can you can always you can always rotate it um, so let's do that rotate Euler rotate it in the in the X there you go 90 degree and I think you can extrude it well yeah I can I think I can extrude it Uh, along the normal height there you go you got a nice cabinet there this is all um, <clears throat> procedural of course uh, you can either use a viewer draw or you can use BMS viewer uh, I think I'm gonna show you that also real soon you can play around with this you know but uh, let's stick this is like the basic right you want to give it to someone you just select make sure you select all the nodes first if you <clears throat> if you didn't select anything it's it's not gonna save it into the presets so select all or select bunch of nodes that you want to save into presets and then you click on save presets name it as something call it simple furniture okay so it says export it to whatever uh, dot json so this line here you can you can observe you can you can copy and then you go in, on a Mac I can go to go to folder and let's paste it there so that's the that's the path let's let's go there so I'm gonna this is the, the path I, I'm I think I'm gonna save this path into favorites so this become my library inside the presets library I have a bunch already right and all this and there is my simple furniture you can actually you can read this I think you can open it with a like a text editor and then you can have a look this is the text that you can edit as well very cool um, so now if you want to make like another furniture you just click on the this guy right here move the nodes a little bit and then create a new transform matrix move it to the side and if you're happy I'll give it a different color uh, if you this one thickness different thickness maybe maybe you want to randomize it a little bit uh, not gonna do that um, make it like that so that's another furniture right there very nice make one more just for example This one, let's move it to to the left. There we go. This one, you know, like a just like a IKEA. You can go to IKEA and make furniture. Would be nice if you can just print it out and use it. Um, so a different color. So currently it's using preview. 
uh, and you need to bake them one by one or you can use uh, Spreadshop Baker so you can bake it into a real object um, Spreadshop Baker what I mean is that there is something here in under Spreadshop so there's a node 3 1 we don't need the node 3 uh, this is the node 3 1 this is an example our example you can click on the B it's gonna bake everything so that's uh, one way to do it if you like um, I can now actually save this first and then save as a new file delete, delete everything and with the our simple furniture let's say instead of viewer draw you want to use a viewer B mesh with a viewer B mesh, it's gonna be a real object, okay? Real objects meaning it's already it's ready for you to render. This uh, again, let's try how to save the preset. So simple, simple furniture, save it B mesh. I just name it, give it a different name. Oops. So okay, there is a manage preset as well. I almost forgot. This one can import preset from GIS, import preset from file. Very cool, and uh, you can also edit our presets edit and manage it delete it and stuff and um, now we have simple furniture with mesh so i can delete this simple furniture oops yeah it crashes again I, I don't know i think it's my mac um don't worry we have already saved our presets and that's always my thing and i'm actually i save a lot uh if you maybe that's why i save every few seconds you didn't see it, but I save Blender a lot. It uh, Blender actually doesn't crash as as much. It's just my computer. So simple furniture B mesh. So we get this thing ready for us to render. It's very cool. And what else? There's so actually you can make a lot of really a uh, very useful tool already in using just uh, nodes in spare talk I, I i use it every day basically for the last few years and see let's say you have a lot of monkey how many monkey we have um 11 let's make 12 monkey let's say you want to arrange it in a grid how do you do that i made a preset here arrange in, in 3d so i just grab all the monkey and then you just arrange it in four by three and there you go i have monkey head arranged in four by three it's that simple you know um even you know like let's let me save this real quick if i go to my yesterday live noting um remiss open gl demo so here I'm making some crazy setup to change the OpenGL preview. I can select all this, save it into preset, you know, OpenGL random. So I'm saving it. Now the next time I open Blender, go to compositing chalk under the preset I can load my OpenGL random ah crap <laughs> it crashes three times this time in live loading this is like a world record don't worry about it compositing spread chalk OpenGL random so I get this and create objects let's see what this gonna do my OpenGL has been modified cool it's that simple and very powerful workflow uh, especially if the nodes actually work together for what you're doing um, now we have this OpenGL randomizer Okay, cool. Uh, you also need to have the default. Okay, you always need a default. So it's a good idea to have the default. Um, and this is where the, the presets is a good, good idea to have like a preset that take everything to the default. So anyhow, that's a quick look at Spreadshock uh, presets.
Um, I think this is really powerful and let's say, yeah, it crash blender. Uh, I think it's uh, because I'm recording as well. That's why. See, it doesn't always happen. Just weird. So let's see what this one does. Oh, this one creates this randomized plane. Um, factorize, split. Okay, I can randomize the every each and every um, design of this frame apparently. So yeah, that's another look. This one inside the monad, you can see there's a offset line and plane, the usual thing. But up here we have these nodes, couple of nodes to generate this. Um, and I can use another plane grid. Make like four by four. Increase this. Here you go. Just another design. And everything is saved into presets. So preset is really, really powerful. I think <clears throat> I really want to be at like a library of node three. I really hi highly recommend that you do that as well. Share it with share it with all the blender community you know share it with us tell us what you're making and this is how you can grow this uh, ecosystem uh, even though this is like you some people some blender artists still think <clears throat> that uh, things like sphere top animation notes is just an add-on i think this is an add-on that soon will become like part of uh, blender sooner or later you know blender 3.0 maybe but Spare chalk is one example where um, node tools that's originally for, for architecture kind of design based on, I think, Grasshopper for Rhino. <clears throat> and it's now, it's, a, it's already like we have uh, hundreds of nodes and they are very useful. And then you start, you can start building library. And once the library build up, um, this is going to be so useful and you can share it with everyone. Um, so sometimes you can sell the tools as well, you know, make a, a lot of useful tools and then share it. And it's becoming part of the workflow. Um, I might use preset more often uh, from today. Um, yeah, we will see. But I, yeah, I think I recommend you to try using the presets. Make a simple note, save it as preset. Next time you need that, you can just load it from the library. And there you go. That's uh, how Spare Shop uh, presets work. Um, sorry about the crashing. Uh, it's just my computer and my recording. And hopefully this is useful. And let me know what you think. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.